Hola, amigos y colegas de Brasil. We hope that you are safe during the pandemic. We continue to follow the devastation caused by COVID-19 and hope that change will happen soon. The three of us are academics who work in Sydney universities in Australia. To begin, we respectfully acknowledge that we are located on land stolen from the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. The Gadigal people have cared for their community, land and waters for thousands of generations based on a deep knowledge of their country. We'd like to pay our respects to their elders, ancestors and acknowledge their ongoing status as the first peoples of this land. I'm Selina McEwen a senior researcher working with Alison and Carl uh, on an Australian government-funded project on leadership diversity in Australia. We're investigating the relationships between people in organisations and how they are affected by different forms of workplace diversity. I'm Alison Pullen and I've enjoyed doing fieldwork with Selena and Carl for our project. I am joint editor of the journal Gender Work and Organisation. I'm Carl Rhodes and it's been my privilege to work on this project and learn so much from all of the people who generously gave their time to contribute to the project. Our article, recently published in Revista de Administración de Empresas, is about sexual harassment at work. We argue that this is, amongst other things, a leadership problem. Sexual violence against women in the workplace is often perpetrated by leaders, managers, or supervisors because of abusive power relations and cultural tolerance for sexual violence in organizations and society. This form of abuse is still common practice despite policy reforms and well-established gender equality schemes and strategies in many parts of the world. We analyzed American and Australian data about sexual harassment in the workplace to understand why it remains so widespread and poorly addressed. For example, we looked at people's submissions to the Australian Human Rights Commission's 2018 National Survey into Sexual Harassment in Workplaces and national data from the US on sexual harassment and assault from the same year. So we also looked at high-profile cases of violence against women that we all know. We found that this form of abuse was not only connected to power imbalances between men and women, but also at intersecting inequalities across gender, class and ethnic lines. We also found that leadership practices play a central role in maintaining or enacting a culture that supports abuse of power over women in the form of sexual misconduct. And this needs to change. To tackle sexual violence and achieve equality in organisation requires disrupting the underlying conditions that reproduce privilege and injustice including the cultural tolerance of violence. So we need to recognise that violence is normalised through leadership practices. We also need to interrogate the gender structures and systems that facilitate sexual harassment. Addressing sexual violence in the workplace requires political change and a commitment from leaders. What's essential is to make leaders responsible for addressing this violence and abuse. Even more than that, leadership practice needs to acknowledge the existence of inequality regimes. It needs to challenge and transform traditional gendered relations in the workplace, relations characterised by productive and restrictive power-based interactions. Leaders of all kinds can learn from shared practices or community that's exemplified by feminist movements such as Me Too, Shouting Back and Black Lives Matter. Leadership is a political practice and it is up to leaders to make a difference for others. Thank you for watching.